Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hi, this is Jessica, and today my guest is... Ashton Greenwood from Diamond Comic Distributors. And I'm very excited to have Ashton here today because as uh, Syosset people know, or anybody who's listened to us, we love comic books here. We have had SciCon twice, uh, which is our biennial um, Comic Con here at Syosset Library. And uh, we are strong believers in... All right, I'm back. Uh, we are strong believers in um, the comic book as definitely being part of literature, be it uh, visual literature, artistic literature, or just, you know, something that people enjoy. Um, and that's pretty much where we're coming at it. Um, <laughs> could you talk a little bit about your job? And um... Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm the Marketing Partnerships Associate at Diamond, so... My main kind of function is to organize our outreach events, so that would be Free Comic Book Day and then also Halloween Comic Fest in October, which is basically the spooky counterpart of Free Comic Book Day. Um, now, and then I just do uh, some of also our publicity things in terms of like promoting things, doing press releases, all of that, and also handling our advertising opportunities. So that's, that's really cool. So today we'll talk about Free Comic Book Day. So how long has Free Comic Book Day been around? And when did, where, why did it start? Yeah, so Free Comic Book Day was started in 2002. It was, uh, the idea was come up with by a guy named Joe Field, who owns Flying Colors, Cards, and Comics in Concord, California. And he came up with the idea kind of to function as an outreach event for people that maybe hadn't read comics before, didn't know they had a shop nearby, and use it as a way to get new people into shops and in that first year there were only four books you could get for free and now we've worked our way up to anywhere from like 45 to 50 books it's really exciting how much do you know about how many people participated i know last year we had you know over 2300 comic shops participating in it and then around 400 libraries it began so okay so you had um a lot of uh, you had a lot of shops uh, participate, but you've also it started to include libraries. So the way that I understand it, as a consumer of comic books, is uh, so this one day it's around usually it's sometime in April or no, it's the first Saturday of May. Yes, it's first Saturday of May every um, every year, and you go to a participating comic shop, which usually is most of them these days. And they have, as you said, like up to about like 50 special comic books that you can just come and take. Yes, ma'am. And how does, um, so how does it work? Like do, um, do the creators themselves decide that they're going to participate in it? Is it usually the publishing houses that kind of work this up? beforehand? Yeah, so the way we do it is we send out an application to all of the publishers that work with Diamond, and they can choose whether or not they want to participate, and then they fill out the application, they throw their hat in the ring for whatever book they want to do, and then we compile all of those applications and give them to what we call our um, selection committee, which is a committee made up of about like eight to ten comic shop owners from various parts in the country. And they deliberate over what they think would be titles that you know would sell well, that people already know. So you'll see a lot of like mainstream properties in Free Comic Book Day because we want to appeal to the masses. Right, uh, and it's it's good for uh, parents or um, people who maybe you know like they might want to get into comic books or they want to get their children into comic books. I used to go just by myself or with my friends or with my husband, but now that I have young children, we've made a yearly tradition out of it. Um, and it's good because it has comics, I think, even though you say it's mainstream, the comics that are available... Mm -hmm. You, they can appeal to all ages. There can be some that are really more adult friendly. There could be some that are all right. ages friendly. Some that would appeal yep. to kids who aren't necessarily into superheroes per se. So it's really like the range is 
very um, robust. Absolutely. And, and that's done with intention. You know, we really want this to be an event that like anybody can go to, like any go by themselves, like you said, or take their family and that everybody can walk away with something that is perfect for them. And I know that a lot of the comic book shops that participate, they will take the time of, um, for that day to, you know, they'll usually either have the like, costumed guests. I know near mm-hmm. near us, um, some um, shout out to Grasshopper Comics in Williston Park. They usually get the 501st from um, Star Wars, the costuming <gasps> group, to come. Oh, that's so cool. And Darth Vader is usually walking around the the main street there which is very cool yeah. my kids are always looking for him uh we also um they'll have sales they'll mm-hmm. you know um bring out the boxes that have been you know and um you know maybe behind the scenes and you can find that thing that you haven't you've been looking for you don't you didn't remember you wanted that issue and you'll get it at a discount so uh, it's really boosted you know the visibility of comic book shops, which while there are comic book shops, I think that are um, chains, you know, you have like your Newberry Comics, you have a few different shops that are chains. They all seem to be mainly still independent. Do you find that? Yeah, that actually is the case. There's no like big like comic book chain, like there's no Barnes and Noble of the comic book world. And anytime there is like a a quote unquote chain that happens to be like three or four or five of the same store. It's still owned by, you know, one guy or like a family. So they're all very much like people in your community. They're all locally owned and operated. Which is, I mean, I know I always lament the loss of bookstores, be they big box or mom and pop bookstores in general. And now, right. you know, I mean, in certain areas, Barnes and Noble is what you got. And you're going to go to Barnes right. and Noble if you want to go to a bookstore. But the unique thing I think about comic book shops, and that's not to say I believe Barnes and Noble has started to kind of lean into free comic book day, but correct me if I'm wrong. I th- no, they have actually. Th- yeah. Yeah. Um, but comic book shops are so unique in that they are independently owned. And a lot of people talk about shopping local and you can't get much more local than your local comic book shop. I think it's really lovely that the publishers have recognized this. It's great. We It's a really great chance to like get to know somebody in your community. And the cool thing about comic shop owners is they genuinely want to get to know their customers. So like they'll take the time to talk to you and ask you like, what brings you in? What books do you like? If they can recommend anything. And it really like kind of rebuilds that community aspect. It really is lovely. And now uh, libraries have gotten in on mm-hmm. the gig. So has the, um, so since its inception in 2002, um, is it a more recent thing that libraries have begun to participate? Yeah, absolutely. In the last couple of years, last four or five years or so, uh, it's become more of a common thing for libraries to kind of get involved. And it's great, especially for communities where there, there really isn't a comic shop close by or like you'd have to go out of your way to get to a comic shop. Everybody has a library and that's already a hub of reading. So it makes sense. It's a natural pairing. And like you said, a lot of comic book shops do do their own sorts of like comic cons or like fan events and stuff. So again, it's a natural pairing. I think so too. A lot and libraries, as time goes on, have embraced that aspect of the world and have kind mm-hmm. of begun to note that this is sort of um, the future of people getting together and talking about books and media. So mm-hmm. a lot of librarians are, I mean, when I, when I started, um, there were librarians who were into comic books. I remember being, you know, one of the few who knew how to pronounce some of the manga titles. Right. Uh, and now it's, what do you mean you don't know how to say, you know, like Inuyasha? That's so easy. Everybody knows Inuyasha. And it's like almost like, you know, like, of course, everybody's going to the the classics aren't going anywhere, but libraries are for everybody. And we need to open our doors to everything. And comic books represent Mm -hmm. um, diverse populations now. You know, the, the creators are really coming in to play in the sandbox. I know that there's still a lot of work to be done in that in that way. But I know there's a big push uh, you know, for diversified creators and stories. Mm-hmm. And 
this is what libraries are all about. We're supposed to be opening the doors to these things. And plus, it's art. Absolutely. And I've even noticed like some of the public libraries around me that their graphic novel sections are growing by the day and are some of the bigger sections in their libraries and also the busiest. <laughs> They they really are. Uh, I know for a fact our juvenile graphic novel collection circulates. Mm -hmm. a, one of our it's one of our highest circulating collections, um, which is great because people are really beginning to see the value in letting children read comic books. I know that sounds kind of sad, but it's not wrong. But it's not wrong because. There was, for a while, kind of a stigma against it, and there still is from time to time. But I have seen less reluctancy and more encouragement from the parents, be it that they themselves are fans, or just in general, that the general uh, view of consuming comic book, consuming graphic novels, has mm -hmm. started to shift. Absolutely. And for the longest time, you kind of touched on this, there was this like weird notion that they were like inappropriate for kids or like the content was too graphic for kids. But now it's really become a tool that educators are leaning on to help like their reluctant readers get into reading. And there's also a lot to be said for visual literacy. Some people, Absolutely. yep, some people, um, some people actually have to learn how to follow a comic book because it does present a different mm -hmm. way of storytelling. Right. Uh, in a way, it's like the oldest way of storytelling because when you look at, you know, like be it hieroglyphics or just other ancient writing pictures were a way to convey a story. Um, but you can also can you can also when you're reading a comic book or a graphic novel, there's a lot of subtext mm -hmm. that you can get which might be an info dump for somebody who might not have the attention span or just, you know, right. like consumes information differently. So you can see emotions and match it with the dialogue. And maybe if it doesn't match, you can tell that there's something going on behind the scenes. That's like, that's other than, you know, watching a motion picture or a movie, that's a very unique way of presenting information in book form. And you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get kind of like those, you get the subtext, like you said, and the body language and those kind of behind the scenes things that you would get with a movie and pair it with the world building and the detail of reading an actual book. It's really it's really quite great. So um, without giving too much away, is there anything mm -hmm. coming up that you're excited about that you know of uh, that people uh, could look out for? In terms of the books? Yeah, for um, for 2020. Yeah, so there's one, uh, one of the books is called Firepower Number 1, and this one's super exciting because it's by Robert Kirkman, the author of The Walking Dead, and it's his first new series since The Walking Dead ended uh, last year, 2019. I didn't know he was coming out with a new series. That's great. Yeah, so that's an exciting one. Um, and then to hit some of like the maybe bigger names that people might know, there's Power Rangers, there's going to be The Legend of Zelda, My Little Pony... Um, Marvel's going to do an X-Men title. That's cool. Uh, so um, Legend of Zelda, there's going to be a new Legend of Zelda comic book. I know tons of people who are going to be very excited about that. Uh, it's already got, there's a lot of hype. Like anytime we <laughs> kind of like try to push that book out on social media and be like, hey, don't forget about the Legends. Because we try to like promote all of them on our channels. That right. seems to be one of the one that gets a, a lot of excitement. I think because Legend of Zelda, which started as a video game, has such a mm -hmm. rich narrative. And it's one of the earlier right. video games on um, a mainstream platform that does kind of have that mythic quality. And it goes very well with, a book or a comic book. Absolutely. And it's got, it's already has a lot of um, like really vibrant graphics and the art is already incredible from the game. So it translates naturally into a fantastic comic book. Very cool. And my little pony, which was, it was a toy property when I was a kid has grown to become something else, which is also sort of impressive. Uh, it was rebooted by, Lauren Faust, I believe, is the name of the animator who kind of um, re began to um, write the story with 
I guess, more depth and has grown into a comic book favorite as well. So it's a really good one because, like you said, there's more depth to the characters. It's especially good for younger kids and girls who maybe feel like it's harder for them to find things that are geared towards them in the comic book world. But it also teaches a lot of really great lessons about you know responsibility and accountability and how we interact with others and how we should treat others and so there's a lot more going on in there than how it originally started so what got you into comic books how long have you been a reader so okay so I've always been somebody that's been kind of in the nerd community like I've grown up with Star Wars and all of those like more traditional avenues and then when The Walking Dead came on TV like oh several years ago at this point um i got really into that i mean my brother have always been really into zombies for some reason and so i was super into that and then realized after i had already gotten into it that it was adapted from a comic so then i sought out the comics and that was kind of my gateway into all of that and kind of explains why i have a, a tendency towards indie comics yeah indie comics have exploded quite recently uh i have to say uh, what are some what are some properties? I know Diamond um, has a bunch of different properties that they distribute. Yeah, so we we work with uh, the big two, if you want to call them, Marvel and DC, and then also uh, Image Comics, who you know publishes The Walking Dead and Kirkman Stories, among others, and then uh, IDW Publishing, Dark Horse. Dynamite, Boom Studios, those are probably the biggest ones we work with. Um, and then tons and tons and tons of other smaller I- indie publishers, Valiant Entertainment, um, Vault Comics, you know, 2000 AD, those guys are over from the UK. And then tons of manga publishers like Viz and Kodansha and Yen Press. And really, really across the board. I mean, Diamond is the largest distributor of English language comic books. So if it's published in English, chances are we, we distribute it. That's really cool. And it's, it's, um, it's great to see somebody who really loves the media grow and grow up in it to be working in it. it is, it's been awesome. It's, it is kind of like a dream job. It's so cool. And it makes it so easy to do the work because I'm excited about this stuff and it's easy to promote something you're excited about because that comes through naturally. So for librarians or libraries mm-hmm. who would like to be involved with Free Comic Book Day, how could mm-hmm. they get involved? Yeah, so there's if they go to the freecomicbookday.com website, um, there's a header bar at the top. If they go to more, there's a drop down and then they hit FAQ. One of the FAQs is how can libraries get involved? Um, And then it kind of tells you a little bit about it. And there's a link to sign up in that answer bubble. And you hit that link and it'll ask you, you know, how many comics you want, where we should ship them to. We guarantee every library that enrolls 50 comics. And then you can request as many additional as you want. We do our best to accommodate everyone, as many people as we can and their requests. But, you know, we're kind of limited by the amount of stock we have. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You know, when you enroll, we'll also send you a promo pack to promote your event. So that'll include stuff like posters and stickers and bookmarks and things of that nature. That's, that's really cool. And for people who want to find out whether their local library or comic book shop is participating in free comic book day, how could they find out? Is there something on the website? So I'm, Fortunately for libraries, we don't have a, a way of cataloging that just yet. They would have to just reach out to their library uh, individually. However, for the comic shops, we, we have a way to catalog that. So there's a, a button on the website in that same header bar that says find a shop, and you click on it, and you pop in your zip code, or if you're using a mobile device, it can track where your mobile device is, and it'll bring up a list of everybody within 30 miles of you that's participating. That's really cool. So aside from um, uh, Walking Dead, what are you reading now? Oh, okay. So I'm always reading Archie. Archie Comics is my favorite thing of all time. (laughs) Archie has gotten really, like, different in recent years, I feel like. 
Yeah, ever since, like, the Riverdale adaption of it took it to a really dark place, and then that kind of dark place went back and influenced the way that the regular comic story has been told. So the Archie comics now are much more dramatic than they were when they first came out. Uh, and then they came out in the 40s, too, so. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else do you like? There's, I just started reading this series called Undiscovered Country, which is fantastic. It's a little bit of like a dystopian sci-fi take on what would happen to America if they often closed their borders and isolated themselves from the rest of the world. So kind of Mad Max, kind of an adventure comic, highly recommended. The third issue just came out last week or two weeks ago, so they're not very far in, but I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I just wanted to circle back really quickly because I got really excited before when you were talking about a Halloween version of the free comic book day yeah absolutely it's called halloween comic fest and it's basically um spooky free comic book day is what it boils down to it's the same concept you can go to your local comic shop and they'll have a selection of free comic books for you to choose from uh but the angle is all these comic books have like a like a horror element to them or halloween themed in some way to kind of play into that like halloween fall october aspect of all of it and uh it's always the last Saturday in October, so like the comic day is the first Saturday in May. This is the last Saturday in October, which will actually fall on Halloween this coming year. Yes, and I couldn't be <laughs> more excited. <laughs> That's great! <laughs> Trick or treat for comic books. Do as many uh, comic book shops participate in this program as with the free as with free comic book day? So unfortunately, not. It's a lot smaller of an event right now. It's about half as many shops, but. The event is still kind of in its infancy, the way I would describe it. So 2013 was its inaugural year. It was the first year we hosted it. So it's still kind of growing. Excellent. And how can libraries get involved with it, uh, provided there isn't a a buy-in like there is for Free Comic Book Day just yet? Right. So we don't really have a program in place where we can... uh, like allocate comic books to libraries the same way we do for, for free comic book day. But there is a cool program that's part of Halloween comic fest where um, comic shops can buy bundles of, of these comic books and they're mini comics. So they're cut a little smaller than like a, a regular size comic, but they are all, all ages titles. So they're appropriate for all readers accessible for everyone. And they come in a pack of 25 for only five bucks. So if you can wrangle up like, 20 bucks you can get a good amount of comics to give out to your patrons that's great and when did that come about because i know free comic book day we talked about how long that's been around but when did this start yeah so this started in 2013 was its first year so it's still a baby (laughs) excellent well i'm so glad to hear about it and when you um when you say horror themed also because we do have a lot of kids who they like things that are scary, but they sort of fall more on the spooky f- spectrum because what I think is scary mm-hmm. and, for instance, what a five-year-old thinks is scary are two completely different things. Are these right. all ages or are they more mature audience? So they kind of run the gamut. Um, those mini comics are all ages. So anything that's a mini com published as a mini comic will be all ages. But then the full-size comics kind of run the gamut from all ages all the way up to mature titles that so they do kind of fall in that full spectrum of spooky all the way up to like actual horror or actually scary however you want to describe it very cool Um, and there's a few publishers that kind of specialize in that spooky or element for kids like you were talking about uh and so like albatross funny books they they do a series called spook house which is exactly that it's basically like scarier spookier stories that are tailored to young readers so they can kind of get that spook without going too far into like what would be inappropriate for young readers. Thank you so much for talking about that as well. I mean, I know there are things that are universally scary. Uh, R.L. Stein has done a really good job of tapping into everybody's fear of dummies mm-hmm. with Slappy, the um, ventriloquist dummy, who's definitely right. very, he's spooky and scary. Yep, I would agree. <laughs> okay. Is there is there anything else you would like to talk about? Um, 47. I just want to throw that number out there so that everybody knows. 47 is the amount of free comics you can get this year. And then there's also two, educate, we call them educational support titles, basically books that, like, if you're new into comics, they'll show you, like, teach you about how to collect them or, like, 
how how uh, free speech is de- defended in comic books because you know that can get a little hairy. But that's so and that's a that's a topic for like another day because that could be an right. hour long talk about the history of censorship of comic books. There's a, a right. whole comic book legal defense. Um, fund, is it the comic book legal defense fund? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, which is always very active um, because as we right, mentioned and they are putting they're putting together one of those educational support titles is from the comic book legal defense fund where they kind of talk about that in fun little stories that make that information more accessible well thanks again uh, for being with us um, I cannot wait to pick up my 47 titles could you repeat titles or does it have to be one of each um, it's com- completely up to the comic shop I don't why you wouldn't be able to i mean some shops do have a limit based on their own inventory they might limit you to like five but some shops say go wild <laughs> that's cool all right well once again uh, this is jessica and my special guest is ashton greenwood and we hope to see everybody enjoying free comic book day this year and thank you very much ashton Thank you so much for having me. I am going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.